Hello there. Quarterfinals, uh, match day two, and we're going to look at uh, the match Wesley Saw against Tamur Rajabov. Now, Rajabov won rather convincingly on day one. He won two games with the black pieces and uh, yeah, dispatched a Wesley two and a half half in the four game mini match. So, day one went to Rajabov. So, Wesley needs to uh, win here the four game mini match to force a tie break on, game, uh, on match day two. Now this game is from, yeah, this four game match, actually game number two, Wesley had white, and let's see if he can shake off the uh, the white blues, uh, he was not doing well with the white pieces on day one. And we have the Italian game, something we've seen a lot from, yeah, almost, <laughs> almost every match, the quiet positional Italian. I guess they like this for, for rapid, uh, rapid games because... Uh, there's not a big chance of, of being surprised in the opening with, with some deep preparation. So it's more about the ideas and playing chess. So people are not looking for concrete uh, opening preparation or avoiding running into it because you don't have as much time as in a classical game to react to uh, strong novelties. Okay, we've seen this uh, positions before. There's a6 or a5, there's rook e8 or not, there's, uh, well, do you want to play d5 or not uh, in some stages? So we'll see. A lot of these uh, uh, decisions once again, rook e8, uh, knight g3, and the bishop pulls back to a7. Bishop b3, white wants to preserve the bishop because uh, this guy is coming over here. And if he hadn't done that, usually you take on e6 and black takes with the rook once he's played rook e8. But here white wants to preserve the bishop, so he plays bishop c2. Now d5 is available and right above plays it. And I think we can safely say that black has, has no problems here and it should be an equal game. I mean, he has a pawn in the center, white does not. The rooks are centralized, the knights are nice, and the bishops are out. So there's no reason to think that white should be uh, better here. So equal game, but now we play chess. Queen e2 by uh, Wesley. And here Ratabot decides to reroute the bishop. Uh, he feels that it doesn't serve a big purpose on this diagonal. Whether or not that's correct, uh, I'm not gonna debate here, but he moves the bishop now to f8 to fortify the king's side. Bishop b2 by Wesley. So there's like more dynamic possibilities in the white position because you can push at the right time c4 or uh, in some cases d4. So that's probably the thing that white has got going for him at the moment. Uh, here he plays queen f1. Now he's threatening to take the pawn, so the queen gets out of the way. He didn't want to take the pawn and take with the queen, because then the queen would be hit, but now he's threatening the pawn. The bishop d5 opens up for the rook, defending the pawn, and Wesley decides to increase the pressure. b5 now, uh, securing the bishop. There was no time for white to, white to play c4 earlier, because bishop takes f3. Uh, excuse me, let's go right back. That was a different game. Uh, bishop b2... Bishop d5, yeah, here we are, rook e3, b5. Now Wesley decides to uh, secure the b4 pawn, and that means that he is thinking about at some stage pushing c4, which makes sense. We'll open up for this bishop here. Okay, rook to e6, rook a e1, increasing the pressure on this pawn, and yeah, here. Ratsabo decides to play e4. Now this may or may not be a good decision. He felt like it was difficult to defend the pawn. And I think his idea is if you take with the pawn, which looks good, there's bishop c4. And you have to play knight e2. And we should be able to now double with the queen or the rook. And put pressure on this pawn because yeah, white, white's pieces are a little bit tight down. But Wesley he took with the knight here. Knight takes e4. Knight takes e4, and c4. A nice in-between move. Hitting two, uh, hitting two pieces, so we're gonna get a piece back here. Uh, and knight g5 was played. Now if you, uh, yeah, if you go back here, for instance, I will also take here, and it will be similar to the game, except uh, 
probably what it will take here now and the queen side is damaged d4 knight here to here and, and white is much better so after c4 Ratchapa went for uh, knight to g5 Wesley took it there was a trade on e3 and he took with the pawn and now uh, Ratchapa took back and further trades so at the end of all of this we have equal material but white does have the bishop pair and I think he's especially happy that he has the light squared bishop because if, if you land the bishop here there's a big diagonal to put pressure on and the king can feel the heat so d4 actually prepares to do that uh, Rajabo decides to put pressure on the queen side pawns immediately and now queen d3 come to d3 with tempo because you have to react to this g6 and now bishop e3 the ideal diagonal for the bishop now you must uh, watch out here because if you move the queen let's say to d7 that would be horrible because queen takes g6 would take advantage of the pin but Ratchabov, as uh, so many times before finds a tactical solution he plays knight to e5 using the pin here and Wesley plays queen c3 I think perhaps queen c2 was a better choice because again we're keeping eye keeping uh, these options in reserve and after knight c4 we could play b takes a5 perhaps and prepare to undermine maybe this knight here but queen c3 probably strong as well <coughs> the difference though is that black and flick and a takes b4 which uh, is what Rajabot did so queen c2 perhaps a slightly more accurate but the queen is nicely placed on c3 some dynamic possibilities especially after e4 white now finally gets what he's aiming for in most openings to get uh, uh, the central pawn duo he gets it takes on c4 and now pushes d5 and we unleash this battery here big big threat and black has to give up an important pawn here and why is it important well it's a pawn but also now you lose all the dynamic possibilities with these pawns who are now doubled and isolated and well also they're actually just lost right now Wesley took the pawn here and he's now up a clear pawn and there's another weakness on the horizon here on the c-file actually double pawns on the c-file as well c3 he goes for the pawn Ratchabot tries to get as much as you can in return for the pawn bishop c5 check now he takes the pawn and bishop a5 by uh, Wesley he's trying to remain two pawns up and he will manage to do so here after takes takes and rook c6 and two pawns up should be enough for the win here in a rook ending d6 and now we just bring the king king to g3 king f3 and here uh, king e3 rook back and here Wesley goes for a simplification he sacrifices the d-pawn Ratsapo takes and now a nice sequence g4 and rook g6 he's gonna win this pawn and he will have double connected pass pawns which usually is more than enough and after rook f5 there was actually resignation here no not yet excuse me he went here rook back king g5 king f2 king h4 and after this rook f5 he actually resigned but why well it's simply game over if he takes this pawn there's rook h5 check let's have a look at that here here and just game over the pawn is gonna run so you can't take it so actually white will just improve the king play it here and then eventually push the pawn and it's going to be game over okay game three and game four were drawn so guess what we have tie breaks tie breaks draw draw so we have uh, Armageddon and let's have a look here we are gonna switch the names uh, we are going to switch up the names let's see we don't have this we don't have this and we don't have uh, this uh -huh. Uh -huh. so let's all get in there so Armageddon Tamer is white and Wesley is black so let's actually change it to Wesley 
Wesley. So. So Armageddon for all the marbles and we've been over this. White has more time, but black has draw odds. So black only needs to draw the game and he wins the match. Let's see what happened. Knight of three by Ratabov. And he goes for uh, e3 here. Knight of six, b3. So he's setting up a quiet, ready setup. Keeping the pieces on, keeping dynamic possibilities. Double Fianchetta now, c5. Classical play here by uh, Wesley. And, well, be aware that uh, Ratzibov has a lot of experience because we're now setting up a King Cynthia type setup with e4, d4, and h4. So white will try to make some active operations on the king side. Black will go for the queen side, b5 here, a3, rook c8. So black is setting up for, for action on the c file. Queen e2, queen to c7. Now, usually in the queen's, uh, sorry, king's Indian, you haven't seen instead of your bishop, so this one is slightly, uh, you know, slightly off here. And Ratibo tries to fix that and plays bishop c1. But that loses some time. Black is now getting ready to, to push on uh, the queen side. Knight g5, h6, and knight h3. So the purpose of this is just to get out of the way of the f pawn and eventually push it. But this has taken some time, and now black is pushing c4. No pressure on this pawn, so we can safely push c4. Ratsipo took, I played knight to f4. Maybe eyeing the h5 square, but these actions are taking time. Knight to e5. And here he goes for a trade. And Wesley takes on d3. Knight takes f3. And White absolutely has to take with the bishop here to keep the game going. As we'll see, he took with the queen and had to hang his hat in absolute disgust here after queen c3. Turns out this bishop doesn't have a good square, just doesn't have a good square. You can't go here, can't go here, and can't go here. So this means we can't connect the rooks, and they are both attacked here with uh, the queen, a fork. So material is going to be lost. Uh, Ratzibov has to go for some, something desperate. He went for the, he sacrificed the rook, went for the king side attack here, knight h5. But there's simply, it's simply too much to beat down a whole rook here against uh, Wesley, so the attack has to crash through immediately because otherwise the material and the past pawn will just decide. And Wesley decides to make the defense easier by giving up the rook for a piece, so now he's up a piece and a pawn, so another pawn. And yeah, um, let's see though what happens if Bishop takes h6. Is he going to attack the queen or take on e4? Probably he's just going to take on e4 here. Rook was protected by the queen, and turns out there's no dangerous discovery. The bishop goes somewhere, and, and this is the most dangerous threat. So even this doesn't work for white, so protects the pawn. And yeah, in the end, they just went for the draw here. Um, which of course wins for black, but uh, at least uh, Rats above saving face. So yeah, uh, Wesley advances after, after a dramatic match. Looked like uh, Ratzibov was a stronger one, but uh, in the end, wasn't to be. So, congratulations to Wesley, who does advance. Once again, uh, I wouldn't mind a like, guys. Helps me tremendously, and I see you in another video. Thank you. Bye bye.